warm welcome to all so in the last class we finished the methods of collection of algae okay so the algal collection is very important for its study so we have to visit a different habitats like ponds lakes streams and also in the ocean and we will collect algae and we studied how to collect algae what are the various methods for collection of algae okay now the collected algae are with you like in a tray or in some packets they are with you so now it's a time to study the algae how to identify it okay so all together it is very difficult for us to identify uh, in the collection day itself okay but we require time for identification so for that we need to preserve it we need to store it for future purpose hmm? okay so how we can store this algae for later study that is now we are going to discuss that uh, algae preservation okay so this uh, powerpoint presentation especially includes the preservation techniques then staining is very essential for studying algae under microscope and the various drying method herbarium methods and identification tools okay so first one we can discuss about the preservation of algae so you know you know what is preservation it is uh, the collection and after that storage Uh, of the algae as such for future study purpose okay without damaging the algae so how is it possible so algae can be stored in buckets in jars in plastic bottles mm, in uh, different uh, tubes etc so while collecting the uh, time of collecting algae you have to take some water from the habitat itself okay so algae should be taken in the uh, bottle also okay with this the collect water from the habitat that is very very important okay so uh, the container should be left open or half filled with the liquid okay and shallow containers are better than narrow deep containers so we prefer usually shallow containers okay so and also another very important uh, method is glass files that is Uh, glass bottles or glass tube like structures are used for collecting algae you can see this is a very common method using in bottles and this is the uh, that glass files that we are usually used for collecting algae it's very handy and very easy and it is very easy for us to arrange in our laboratory okay now uh, we can discuss uh, the another method that is open dish so we you can uh, place the collected algae in a uh, water with uh, in the petri plate and our open dish with reduced light that will kept uh, you can keep it for a few days okay and for long term storage it is difficult it is better to preserve in liquid or dried and preserve as herbarium or you can convert it into microscopic slides so take a slide microscopic slide put the algae then make it permanent okay that time itself and you can many years back it will be as such so making permanent slides so these are the simple ways of preservation of algae so we can discuss one by one so by collecting them washing them then keeping uh, like this in cans or in bottles for long term storage okay or in the culture uh, or in the files like this that is glass tubes also okay now first method is liquid preservation oh okay how can you uh, fix algae in liquid so we usually use formalin or formaldehyde and we prefer 40 percentage formaldehyde for liquid preservation clear and that is the best method and it is diluted between 1 by 10 or 1 by 20 with the collecting solution if it is river water take the river water and dilute it with formaldehyde if it is pond water dilute it with the formaldehyde and another best method is fix or preserve the algae in uh, faa that is formaldehyde gaseal acetic acid and alcohol plus water this is a good preservative for algae so there is a particular ratio for taking each of the components then it become the faa and that combination is effective for liquid preservation clear and 
many of them are uh, many of this um, laboratory people use alcohol and water content mixed with but that usually spoil algae that usually destroys algae clear so FAA or formaldehyde 40 percent um, and its dilution is um, very good for algae preservation clear and after that you can arrange them in the laboratory now uh, algae can kept in diluted formalin for many years and uh, solutions may be replaced by ethyl alcohol with glycerin and you can add 1.5 grams of copper sulfate because copper sulfate retains the original color of the algae green color so you just add a pinch of copper sulfate in that uh, preserve uh, liquid preserving um, so, so, solution add a copper sulfate that will maintain the color of the algae clear so this is the formaldehyde and this is the uh, fixed algae by adding copper sulfate okay now uh, we can also another very important method for liquid preservation that is lugol solution so how you will prepare lugol solution lugol solution for preparing you need 1 gram of iodine crystals and 2 gram of potassium iodide in 300 ml water okay so take 300 ml water 1 gram iodine crystals and 2 gram potassium iodide clear and it is mixed and that become lugol solution now from that lugol solution take 3 drops and put it in your 100 ml sample clear so from that take 3 drops and transfer to your 100 ml sample this is a good preservative for short term storage of algae this is the lugol's iodine solution okay now so you now studied how to preserve algae for long term studies okay storage now uh, you have to prepare slide for observing under a microscope so while observing under a microscope you should differentiate different parts like chloroplast pyranoids everything you have to dis uh, differentiate for that for a proper uh, preparation of slide you need to color this algae filaments that method is known as staining technique so the staining technique in algae mainly we use aniline blue aniline blue is a common stain that is one percentage aqua solution with aniline blue with the four percentage of molar hcl okay then toluidine blue and potassium permanganate are also useful for staining macro algae macroscopic algae okay so aniline blue toluidine blue and potassium permanganate are common stains you see and another important one is indian ink another good stain for highlighting mucilage and flagella mucilage algae you studied the algae covered with the mucilage in wall works or some algae like that so this mucilage part and flagella is very clear when you use indian ink as a stain okay so aniline blue toluidine blue potassium permanganate and indian ink that's very important stains for staining okay so you can stain it and you can observe under a microscope color structure will opt clear now after staining a 30 seconds the procedure is just add stain you have to wash it rinse in water then add a drop of corn syrup okay uh, corn syrup solution and uh, place the algal filament in corn syrup solution and kept um, cover slip okay corn syrup solution is added to the stained algae and kept cover glass now uh, side of the cover glass uh, also you can add a corn syrup solution and that uh, that over portion will evaporate and cover slips are finally sealed with the nail polish in order to prevent the fungal infections okay so uh, stain it wash with water add corn syrup then put a cover glass then uh, seal with a nail polish this is another permanent preservation technique and uh, glycerin and other mounting agent uh, can also be used instead of corn syrup glycerin that you are using in your lab work clear so you, we studied liquid preservation in formaldehyde fa it's blue gold sardine and second we studied the permanent slide method by staining and what are the stains we used also we also now you you know okay now next method is herbarium method for macroalgae so macroalgae are the largest algae that we can observe with our naked eye 
So, the best method for preservation of macroalgae is herbarium technique. So, what is a herbarium? It is a collection of dry processed preserved specimens. Okay. Systematically arranged for purpose of reference and identification. Okay. Usually, this is done in the case of plants that you know. So, when you collect a plant, you dried it, you press it, then you pasted it in a sheet of paper, uh, write everything regarding the plant are kept in a herbarium, in a box or in, in your institution. Then when uh, uh, later many years after, uh, any scientist came and to know this plant, he will come and he will check the herbarium and looking into the report and part he can identify it. Same method we can also use in the case of algae. So algae collect, dry it, paste it in a sheet of paper, add every information in that, okay, useful for identification. So, seaweeds are usually, sargassum you studied, okay. Seaweeds are usually uh, uh, dried like this method. So, that uh, description of the locality, everything is required in the sheet. So, for that, first collected specimen should be cleaned off. Remove all the mud and the sand. Uh, wash with water, this is a seaweed. Then wash with water. Uh, then fresh water is taken and... Uh, uh, in a tray, fresh water tray taken and below that you can place the sheet where this should be mounted. Place the sheet under water. Then what is the next step is uh, uh, the spread the specimens. Um, all the parts you should spread uh, in, by keeping in water and uh, in the, uh, like this spread and uh, apply uh, a cloth. That is uh, another uh, material apply on that. Take up all the dirty substances from that. Then mound it or paste it in the herbarium sheet. So then you tilt it. Then what happens? All the water will remove it out. Completely removing. Then uh, sheet is removed and arrange them with the help of forceps and a needle. So likewise, uh, this is the sheet. This is the cheesecloth. Then keep it, you uh, should all process is done under uh, inside water. Keep this cloth in water in a tray. Keep that algae, spread it like this by using needle or forceps. Then from this take it out, drain off all the water. Now it is get ready to paste it. Now uh, this finally appear like this. Okay. Now dry herbarium sheets after uh, keeping it everything dry for one or two weeks required for complete drying up then they are arranged they are using blotting paper remove all the water then they arrange okay so for that you can apply cheese cloth on the top of the specimen to cover to remove water a blotting sheet etc then these herbaria prepared sheets are piled one ever one above the other kept under a weight or a wooden press okay now, uh, and press is kept at a room temperature, uh, then process repeated till the specimen free of moisture. Okay. So, once you kept it under, uh, for example, uh, I will, uh, this is the press. Okay. So, this is the, uh, our herbarium sheet with the algae. So, now keep a one weight in the lower side. Keep all the algae one above the other like this using cloth or blotting paper. Keep another weight on this, then tie it together. That is a press. Then change the paper regularly. Finally, all the water will completely replaced. Rain, drain off. Okay. Then uh, that will become dry. Then you can paste it in the herbarium sheet. It's okay. On drying, uh, the cloth is removed. Labeled. Uh, that sheet should label containing collection number, date, locality, everything. The labeling uh, is very important procedure because uh, after many years, you can, uh, one a, a scientist or a student can check the herbarium sheet that should contain all the information on the lower right hand corner okay lower right hand corner of the sheet okay the label size the labeling slip it should be of 11 into 7 centimeter in size like this 11 centimeter into 7 this is the label label usually used that we spaced in the herbarium sheet now, uh, label provide important data, the family of that algae, for example, chlorophyceae, botanical name, for example, you can have uh, Zygnima, its habitat in pond water, locality in Thalipramba, 
and ecological notes all that date collector who collected it everything okay now after that uh, pressing and uh, pasting now the sheets are ready now you have to keep it that is known as storing so after proper drying that should be stored in a wooden or steel almara so a special folders are constructed so a folder should containing for a genus for example uh, clamdamonas uh, sorry uh, that blue, uh, sargassum so sargassum genus having a box so keep all the species of sargassum in that genus cover okay so arrange genera and species in alphabetical order then uh, some time sometimes insects may attack cockroaches like that so in order to prevent that you can apply uh, some insect repellents into the boxes example naphthalene compounds so this is the way how this is arranging so this is our prepared herbarium see here is the uh, see i will show you here is the labeled uh, see uh, here is the label this label contains all the information regarding the uh, herbarium this is a herbarium this is the see this is the sheet this is a herbarium sheet uh, this is the algae that we are pressed dried and pasted here and now in inside this uh, 11 into 7 cm size label we write everything locality ecological notes date collector collection everything okay now we have to arrange like this in, or like this in a boxes for example this box containing a genus box keep it inside that likewise everything arranged in alphabetic order like this so this is no, this um, uh, center is known as herbarium this is the herbarium clear so after a many years back a, if a student uh, visits this herbarium and if he, if she or he want to collect uh, know about the sargassum she can take the sargassum folder and take sargas uh, take all the sheets then open it and uh, she can study all the species of sargassum so this is a very simple technique and this is a very useful technique for identification purpose okay the last step is identification so collection preservation staining herbarium now identification so while collecting itself you have to note it all the features morphological anatomical everything then uh, description and based on that you can refer some certain monographs hmm? for example cyanophase having a monograph prepared by the scientist algologist deshika chari uh, then fritz written three volume book so fritz book of identification likewise many scientists are wrote uh, wrote the various types of books references so you can refer that and you can identify that algae and you can prepare the key for easy identification and compare them and if any doubt you can confirm with the experts that is known as identification so preservation liquid preservation uh, formaldehyde faa leucol solution then uh, after that uh, microscopic slide permanent slide preparation then you can have staining techniques then different types of stains applied then you can have herbarium technique for uh, sea weeds usually okay and also uh, you study the uh, how preparing herbarium how it is arranging so that's all for today's class have a nice day thank you